Jacksonville up today. Win total six and a half over minus 130. Last year, disaster. We'll tell you well, a big reason why in a second. Three and 13 straight up. Seven, eight, and one ATS. Ten and six to the over. Two and eight in games decided by seven points or less. Mainstream stats. 13 takeaways, which was 31st. 29 giveaways tied for fourth. Horrendous minus, six, minus 16 margin. 5.1 yards per play near the bottom. 4.2 yards per rush. Average 6.3 yards per pass, bottom five, 34 sacks allowed near the league average. What do you have on the defense, Teddy, which was actually did a better job late in the year? Sure. I mean, the numbers defensively for the Jacksonville Jaguars last year, in my mind, are somewhat misleading. All right. They finished allowing only five yards per play. That's number four in the NFL. But the key stat, obviously, you talked about right at the top with the turnovers. They had so many turnovers. That led to so many short fields for their opponents, they didn't have to gain so many yards uh, against the Jags. And, you know, the other stats may be a little bit more uh, realistic about this team. They had an 88.5 opponent's QB rating. That's right around uh, the NFL average. They had 33 sacks. That's right near the NFL average, slightly below. And 3.8 yards per rush allowed. Again, that's a top quartile, but another one that could be misleading. There were a number of teams that were running out the clock in the second half against the Jags instead of trying to beat them. But you're also talking about a team that went 2-8 and eight in games decided by a touchdown or less. So it wasn't just a situation where <laughs> uh, the opponents were running out the clock in the second half. They lost a lot of close games last year, and most of it was turnovers. Yeah, and uh, Blake Bortles, unbelievable. He has more pick sixes in his career than wins. Think about that. Bradley out. Doug, we knew that. Doug Marone, the new coach. Coughlin, the new executive vice president. So now we have a, you know, Greg Olson was also let go week six as the OC too. Is there any weapons there for Bortles to use? And of course they get four net in a draft. What do you think? Sure. I mean, now we, you know, we got uh, a full year for Nathaniel Hackett to have his offense installed. He was promoted after uh, Olson uh, was uh, fired mid season. And it's the fourth different offense installed over the last four years. Of course, those are the four years that Blake Bortles will have played in the NFL stacks a deck against any quarterback, but Man, you got some weapons here. No question about it. You have Allen Robertson and Allen Hearns as wideouts. I'll take those guys uh, with <laughs> uh, as, as legitimate downfield weapons. And let's not forget, Bortles had all those turnovers. Look at some of the defenses he faced. He faced the Chiefs and the Texans twice, the Bills, the Broncos, the Vikings, all excellent two elite defenses last year. So, uh, I mean, it, it comes down to, you know, there was some promise for Bortles in 2015. This year, he's got a running game. You talk about Leonard Fournette and, and an offensive line. Pro football focus graded this offensive line as number 13 in the NFL. Nobody talks about the center, Brian Linder. He's a guy who people probably should start talking about. And if this offensive line is above average and they have a running game, all of a sudden, Bortles isn't throwing pick sixes all the time and he's finding his receivers downfield. Well, so there's most sharps like this team. Oh, actually, they love this team over. I mean, what do you think about them coming off a three and thirteen season and trying to go seven and nine to cash the ticket? I sure as heck wouldn't bet it the other way. Look, this team again. We talked about the defensive stats being somewhat misleading, but their offense had the third third worst third worst average starting field possession in average starting field position uh, in the NFL. I love Jalen Ramsey last year. He was a legit uh, defensive rookie of the year candidate. You know, you look at a, a team that was willing to spend the free agent dollars this year. Calais Campbell, you know, the best defensive lineman available, you could say. Uh, A.J. Bouye, the most promising cornerback, you could say. Um, they uh, brought in Barry Church from Dallas. This defense looks really good. They got a pass rush, uh, you know, uh, with the Fowler and uh, not, not, I'm going to butcher his name. Nyaguke, <laughs> I apologize, but they got a pass rush. They have a secondary. They have a linebacking core. A defense that showed some signs last year might be pretty darn good this year. And a team that was looking, you know, you look at their needs going into the draft and going into free agency, they filled every need they had. Fournette, Cam Robinson, and Smoot uh, at the defensive end. And Westbrook from Oklahoma is one more weapon. There's a lot of things I like about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, to the schedule. Last year, strength of schedule slightly tougher than average. This year, much weaker than last year. The AFC South plays the NFC West and the AFC North. The two extra games, not bad. At the Jets and the Chargers at home. I, I just can't back Blake Bortles, and I think it's a lot 
Now, you mentioned the defense. It was supposed to be good last year, too, uh, and it didn't work out. But I can't get past Bortles, who's been a disaster. And, again, it's alarming when you're talking more pick sixes and wins. I don't think they can go 7-9. and nine, But you, you kind of like this entire division, which is odd. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with liking a division. <laughs> you know, if you say, all right, hey, you know, I like Tennessee. I like Jacksonville. Uh, certainly as two teams that stand out. We talked about Houston as a team uh, that we look to make money on this season. But keeping it with the Jacksonville Jaguars, if Bortles is decent, and the, and the defense last year, the numbers show they were pretty good. And even though they were somewhat misleading, that defense looks even better right now. And even though Bradley's not there, all he did the first few years at the helm was build up a defense. Now all those guys are starting to come into play. They can run the football. Jacksonville's going to be dangerous this year. They are not going to go 3-13 and 13 in 2017. I'll tell you that. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.